All right, folks, we have returned. Let's start case number 15 of the conspiracy. And I'm back in Grimsboro for this one again. Murder on the dance floor. How do you become the most trusted brand of SUVs? We've got room. You make it for those who are running a bit late. Ooh. Ooh. Matthew, we've been in the greens for a while now, and Tony Marconi's becoming an even bigger thorn in my side. Ever bigger thorn in my side. <coughs> Marconi can insist all he wants that he's a legitimate businessman. I still don't trust him as far as I can throw him. Does he really expect us to believe his so-called security company filled with former gang members is above board? Worst of all, Marconi's the only face my dear Zoe can recall. Can recall from when she went missing. Her amnesia means she can't even remember me. So why him? I won't rest till I have answers, Matthew. And if there's dirt to be found on the old thug, it's bound to be at the Blue Flamingo, his CD nightclub. The club will still be closed this time of day, so we'll be able to pay a bit, pay it an, a visit undisturbed. Let's go, Matthew. Pretty much one year since the city and county of Honolulu opened this 42-unit affordable housing complex on Pihikoa Street, and according to the city, it's thriving. Every unit occupied rent ranging from $880 to just over $1,300 per month. Honolulu Mayor Kirk Caldwell says this housing complex is the only permanent solution to homelessness. Today is Ohia Lekua Day, proclaimed by Governor David Ige. An Ohia tree is planted today in the grounds of Queen Anne's Summer Palace in Nibirani. As I was reporting, Nika Miyashima tells us this one tree will remind us how important the Ohia is and that needs to be protected. My local news on, please disregard that. Beautiful, iconic, in danger. The Ohia Nibirani tree is being taken down by the forest. Lock Satchel. Matthew, that woman's dead. And what the heck are those marks on her face and neck? The autopsy will tell us exactly how she died, but there's no doubt in my mind that she was murdered. I told you something was suspicious about Marconi and his businesses. I'll bet he was. Porca miseria! What did you do to my DJ? What did we... We just got here, Marconi. Are you saying this woman worked for you? Yes, that's Kalua Kaboom, the Blue Flamingo star DJ. Interesting. You'll have to tell Senior Trooper Matthew Moore after we've cordoned off the area. Of course, whatever you say, officers. Ugh. Listen to that Marconi, acting all innocent. Wait till we interrogate him. Now I see you found a potential clue. This sash must belong to the victim. Her initials are on it. Let's unlock it. Matthew, we came to the Blue Flamingo to find out what Marconi's really up to, and we discover a murder. Coincidence? I think not. And we're gonna prove it. 
I'm going to get some more stars first before I talk to Marconi. Sit tight, folks. Okay, I'm going to examine the lock satchel first. I don't know if that's going to get me to the next crime scene, but we'll see. Six, six, one, one, six. Okay. One. Three. Six, three, one. Six, four. One, three, four. There we are. And that's going to do seven. Great work opening the victim's satchel, Matthew. Now let's have a dig through it. found this baseball cap at the bottom of the victim's satchel. Wait a second. I recognize that symbol on the cap. It's the logo for the Waterside Market, where you'll find the best donuts in Grimsboro. It looks like the victim visited the market recently, which means we should check it out. Let's hope the donut stall is already open. But beforehand, let's talk to Tony Marconi. So Marconi, first we learned you're recruiting former gang members for your so-called security company. And now we find a dead body in your nightclub. Inspector Jones, how many times must I tell you I'm a bona fide businessman these days? Do you really expect us to believe you had nothing to do with the death of Kalua Kaboom? See your Trooper Matthew, why would I kill my biggest cash cow? I don't know nothing about the noise which passes for music these days, but that DJ brought in kids by the droves to the Blue Flamingo. I tell you one thing, if I find out who killed her, they're dead meat. Figuratively speaking, of course. Since you obviously what wouldn't hurt a fly, make sure not to go too far, Marconi. We'll be keeping a close eye on you. Oh, the cheese is a clue. Wow, that's a surprise. Mr. Watson, 
Last night, I had Got the first star. At the home of the woman who took that necklace, Mrs. Finley. Mrs. Fletcher, I suggest you take this up with Mr. Beaumont. Oh, here he is. Matthew, why on earth has this cheese got a picture of our victim on it? Maybe whoever sells it can tell us more about Kaboom. Let's see if we can identify them from the logo. He also picked up a VIP invite for the victim's performance last night at the Blue Flamingo. Think you can recover the guest's torn off name? And I agree. This ripped up photo may well lead to something. Let's tape it back together. That was like the corpse. Matthew, this is a photo of the victim, dead. It's exactly the position we found her in, which means it must have been her killer who took the shot. What kind of monster would hang around after murdering someone and take a photo of their handiwork? Gabriel will know. Now, so? get the VIP invite out of the way. Rob. Oh. Rob and Nash. Robin Ash. Matthew, the name on the VIP ticket for the victim's DJ set was Robin Ash. This Miss Ash is clearly a fan of our dead DJ, which means she'll be able to give us more insight insight into our victim. Let's pay her a visit. This is the only way campaigns are run anymore. Not by me, they're not. Now get out. Get out! You know something, pal? It's a dirty world out there. Well, maybe you ought to ask yourself, do you really want to be with me to win? Come on. What she knows about the victim? OMG, are you the Popo? I've never spoken to a real life police officer before. Er, uh, Miss Ash, we're here concerning the murder of Kalua Kaboom and. DJ Kaboom's been murdered? I can't even. Kalua Kaboom was the ultimate bay. Those sick beats and wicked drops, her parties were mega lit. Um, if you say so, it's clear you're a fan of DJ Kaboom. Did you notice anything odd or suspicious about her lately? No. TBH, I'm always too busy twerking and grinding to Kaboom's tunes to care about anything else. YOLO! Amarite! Am I right? It seems one Sheila Kowalski, which was her name, because I reported, was arrested. YOLO, am I right? I don't think it was what I said earlier. Kill Two. It's a little like Swiss cheese. Tallulah Shropshire. Matthew, the cheese sporting the victim's face comes from the Bree Me Up stall, whose owner is one Tallulah Shropshire. It will be Gouda to talk to Tallulah. Nice point on words.
Your favorite Hallmark movies are now at Hallmark Books. And when you're going out to play like us, take your favorite stories with you wherever you go. Plus, every book contains one very special recipe. Of course, I do have, of course, I do have a pretty hefty plan to sell tomorrow. Well, hey there. My song isn't open yet, but I can tempt you with a wee bit of Gruyere. Or how's about a scrumptious slice of Wensleydale? Sounds delicious. It sounds delicious, Miss Shropshire, but I'm afraid we're here on business, not pleasure. We noticed you used Kalula, Kalula Kaboom's face on your cheese, and... Ah, yes. I thought a DJ would help me attract more youngsters to my stall. Well, I'm sorry to tell you that Miss Kaboom was not murdered earlier today. Kalula? Murdered? Kalua was as bonny as a cheddar and onion pie on a cold winter's day. Why would anyone want to hurt her? That's what we're trying to find out. Well, Miss Shropshire, please get in touch if you think of anything that might help us catch Miss Kaboom's killer. Will do. Until then, may the force breathe with you. That'll do. I'll see you guys when these two are done. Okay, we have returned. Let's get the results of the photo of the victim from Gabriel first. Matthew, looks like we have a killer for whom committing murder is not enough. They also need to record the work for posterity. Posterity. I can't wait to hear what this tells us about their psychological state, Gabriel. Well, first off, by taking a photo of their, of their dead victim, the killer revealed narcissistic tendencies and an inflated sense of ego. But then they tore their photo into pieces, which indicates remorse for what they had done. This is all very interesting in theory, Gabriel, but I'm not sure it'll help us find Kalua Kaboom's killer. I know, which is why I have another important snippet of information for you. You see, I recognize the make of, of camera this photo was taken with. And I can confirm that the killer took their snap using a Cameroid 260, the finest tote bag sized instant camera on the market. So we're looking for a murderer with a Cameroid 260. Well, the lens will be pointed straight at them when we take their mug shot, Matthew. Er, Martine, Martine, hmm? Oh, sorry, Matthew. I was just listening to the Electric Booty Hoo Ha remix. My latest corpse is Magnum Opus. An apt name, seeing she was electrocuted to death. Electrocuted? Yikes. Yes, did you see those spidery trails spreading to her face? This shows she received an extremely high voltage jolt of electricity to the neck, <coughs> which killed her almost instantly. I also noticed another strange mark, unrelated to the electrocution, which is consistent with the victim's necklace being ripped off. I assume the killer did this while zapping her to death. And in still doing, the murderer also left behind a trail of Waffle Pop crumbs on the victim. Ah yes, Waffle Pops are all the rage in the green. I'm salivating just at the thought of eating one. I prefer a buttery croissant myself. In any case, the victim was gluten intolerant, which means it's your killer who indulges it in this wheat-based treat. Well, Matthew, let's hope the killer's ready to swap Waffle Pops for prison porridge. Matthew, we went to the Blue Flamingos to find more intel on Tony Marconi and discover that murderers still follow him wherever he goes. Kalua Kaboom was electrocuted to death in the very club she DJed in. Marconi claims to be as pure as the driven snow, but obviously I don't trust him one bit. Our other suspects include Robin Ash, the victim's fan, and cheese seller Tallulah Shropshire, who used the victim to promote her wares. Could either of them have had reason to kill her? Matthew, glad I caught you. Because I know the last place the victim went before she died. We'll see you all then for chapter.
And we are back for and we are back with murder on the dance floor, chapter two. I ran a check on the victim's credit card bill, and it turns out her last purchase was from a store called Magical Mystery Records. Which means someone from the store may have seen her not long before her death. Nice work, Kathy. We'll go check it out right away. Well, this is one colorful store, isn't it, Matthew? But I digress. What clues did you find? Oh, I see. There's a page in this notebook entitled Music at the Blue Flamingo. This must be about our victim, given she dj there. We better uncover what's written on the rest of the page. I agree. And if you want to fix this broken picture frame and look through that box of knickknacks, I sure won't stop you. The event was organized by a strong they member who became like friends with them while interning at the hospice uh, center. Great story. Oh, that's a great story. Yeah. Cheers, bud. Thanks, Mike. That's a great story. Thank you, bud. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, bud. Thank you, bud. Oh, broken frame, first of all. I think I meant to get the first one. Hey, Ziggy Sparks. What, wasn't he, uh... The returns Mr. we appreciate you coming on in here. There we go. Now this poster is commemorating Ziggy Sparks, the store's employee of the month. If the victim had been buying things from here, there's a good chance this Ziggy guy knew her. We should talk to him. Okay, I guess it's a new person. Well, let's see if Ziggy is the victim. Ah, some new customers. Most excellent. Actually, we're from Grimsboro PD, and we need to talk to you about Kalua Kaboom. Do you know her? Let me think. My memory ain't so good. Ah, yeah, Kalua, that DJ. She comes in all the time to pick up records. Kalua's into the vintage stuff, just like me. I'm old school, man. The only modern thing I own is my Camaroy 260. Mr. Sparks, I'm sorry to tell you that Miss Kaboom was murdered earlier today. 
Murder? Not cool, man. Why can't we just live together in peace like Lennon wanted? Kalula was just here earlier today. We had a smoke together and talk tunes like always. She was a groovy chick. I'm gonna miss her. song about the blue flamingo listen to the lyrics there's a place i'll never go it's called the blue flamingo where the brainwashed masses go to cry from the soul destroying music that makes you want to die matthew this song is clearly a slight against the victim's music the author of the composition is one teddy brox brooks we should talk to mr brooks about his inflammatory song it was a mightily tragic conundrum which made me leave my beloved London. <coughs> uh, Mr. Brooks? No, no, no. I cannot be interrupted while my creative juices are in full flow. I'm sorry, but this can't wait. DJ Kalua Kaboom was murdered at the Blue Flamingo today. Did you know her? I only knew this DJ Kaboom through her so-called Oriverse, which was a perfect example of the kind of dross that passes for music these days. Kind of think of it, her music was a bit like this waffle pot, pretty and saccharine, but offering a short-lived pleasure with minimal depth of flavor. Now my compositions, on the other hand, they're more cerebral, like my like sautéed liver. Would you like me to play you something? Uh, maybe another time. Matthew, the necklace hidden in the box of trinkets says kaboom on it. It must have belonged to our victim. And look, its chain is broken. Martine told us the killer ripped the necklace off the victim. This has to be the one. So now we know the killer came to the store. Let's send a necklace to the lab and see what else we can learn about them. And I'll see you guys in 12 hours.
All right, we have returned. Let's get the results of the victim's necklace right now. Maybe I can get the silver worth before my work. Hey, Jones, do you remember when you got all hyper on s'mores on our camping trip? Jumping on trees, talking really fast? You should have been there, Matthew. It was hilarious. Amir, I sincerely hope your hilarious story has something to do with the victim's necklace. In a sense, yes, because it made me wonder how you'd react to a drug called Scrappy Snacks, traces of which I found all over the victim's necklace. Scrappy Snacks are herb-based and what you call a legal high, which means you can't get prosecuted for taking them. <clears throat> a legal high? What nonsense! Just call them what they are, new designer drugs. What's more important is that Martine confirmed there was no trace of Scrappy Snacks in the victim. So they must have been deposited on the necklace by the killer. So whoever killed Kalua Kaboom is not only a murderer, but also a drug user. Matthew, talking of questionable activities, why don't we take another look around the Blue Flamingo, which I'm sure is a hotbed of, the, of iniquity. And as such, it has an obligation to its shareholders. I simply can't turn it into a charity when it suits us. Thank you, sir. Did your lights also go out to them when your subsidiary was selling them life insurance, knowing they had no chance of ever collecting? That was never done. Was it? In 1932, federal insurance was rating about a million dollars a year in life insurance. By 1942, that number increases ten times a year. How do you suppose that happens? Ooh. Mr. Stewart? You're talking about a long time ago. Don't tell us you've forgotten the details that made your career at all. You were able to sell those policies. Ah, because a stained t-shirt sucked up his blood. I didn't know anything about Laptop. Director for Eastern European Operations in 1938. Richard? Yes. From Federale. Sales number reporting directly to you. Okay? There's rumors. That's all. Unsubstantiated rumors. The numbers don't lie, Mr. Stewart. Are you telling us that you suspect that there's a fear? Will I get the first song anyway? Yes, I will. Just barely. Airplane manufacturers, we were all doing business with Germany. I got our own state department. Refused entry to these people based on the same information. Matthew, this looks like a band t-shirt for fans of our dead DJ, but someone to face it with the words dumb Kalua. Let's see if that pink powder can provide any leads on the t-shirt man. And he also found the victim's laptop. I'm sure she wouldn't mind us cracking her password if it helps put her killer behind bars. Pretty risky proposition. She's in the bag. Mr. McCoy. This rosy powder we collected from the victim's promo t-shirt under the microscope, Matthew. That's your proposition. Did you know the Federale was originally founded by a Jewish family? They were doing it to their own people. Mr. McCoy, that book can ease a lot of financial pain. I won't let your client use his company's money to pay his debt to society. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a closing argument, right? What can I get to the book? Pink hair dye. Those are the books that pay the rent. 
It's not that these pink particles from the victim's band t-shirt are hair dye. You're right. We do have one pink haired suspect in our midst, Robin Ash. But Robin said the victim was the ultimate bay. So why would she call the victim dumb Kalua? We need another chat with her. The girl. This is Alan Beck. Time for us to. This is Alan Beck. Did they check my mother already? She wasn't supposed to go until 9 30. Must be down the hall somewhere. Isn't it your child? Miss Ash, you told us he loves DJ Kaboom's music. So what made you write Dumb Kalua on her promo t shirt? Oh, brother. Well, I guess there's no point in lying anymore. Yeah, okay, I trashed that t-shirt, but it was only because I was still salty about what she did at my party. You hired her for a private party. What happened? To be honest, at first I couldn't believe it when Kaboom agreed to DJ my 21st birthday bash. It was going to be totes epic. But I don't know if she was drunk or whatever, but she played some insane tunes and used flashing lights that were crazy mental, and one of my squad ended up having a seizure. It was savage and my party was ruined, but that cow just didn't care. I even had to throw away all the precious Camelot 260 pics I took because I was too shook to look at them. After the party, Kalua kept sending me VIP invites to her shows, to her shows to apologize. OMG, I'd like rather get smacked on Scrappy Snacks at home alone, alone than hang out with her anymore. Now the locked laptop. Two, five, two, three, five. Eight, five, eight, five, two. Right down the middle. Two, seven, eight, seven, five. There we are. And that will do. Matthew, now you've unlocked the victim's laptop. Let's see if Kathy can find anything useful on it. Twelve hours also. I might speed this up, but we'll see what happens. For now, this is Matthew. See you then. Okay, we have returned, and let's get the results of the victim's laptop. You know, Matthew, since we had Sammy, Alex and I have barely had time to hang out with our friends. Kathy, if you're looking for a babysitter, I'm uh, afraid I'm kind of busy at the moment. No, no, it's actually your victim's laptop that got me thinking about my social life because it made me reconnect with an old friend of mine. You see, you see, the only thing apart from music on the victim's laptop was her as yet unpublished website. So, of course, I decided to hack into it. I quickly realized the coding included a lot of my web designer pal's signature techniques, so I contacted him to see if he could tell me anything about the victim. It turns out Kaboom had asked him to revamp her website because she was looking for a new job and wanted to attract potential employers. A new job, but Marconi told her she was the Blue Flamingo's cash cow. If the monster knew his biggest asset was planning to leave, who knows how he might have reacted. Let's have a word with him. Hey. It's time to take your style to the next level. I'd be a little ticked off myself, but uh, just respect your wishes. Let's see what Marconi has to say. Marconi, did you know DJ Kaboom was looking for a new job? Of course. I make it my business to know everything. And I see that you do too. Very well, let's talk openly. 
That silly woman asked me for a ridiculous pay raise and threatened to move to the infernal chicken nightclub if I refuse. What was she thinking, threatening the reformed monster? Didn't she know that I am the king of blackmail? I mean, I was. Nowadays, I spend my days enjoying the simpler things in life, like eating waffle pops and taking photos of my pasta with my Camaroy 260. Of course you do, but if we find out you killed the DJ in revenge for her wanting to leave, you'll be back to enjoying simpler things like your prison cell. Is he the one? I don't know. I don't know about you, Matthew, but I need a breather to process what we've learned so far in the case of the dead DJ. We now know Kalua Kaboom infuriated Tony Marconi by threatening to leave the Blue Flamingo unless he gave her a pay raise. Robin Ash is another of our suspects whom the victim likes totes riled up by giving one of her friends a seizure through her crazy DJ set. We also met songster Teddy Brooks, but his only beef with the victim is her music, and Ziggy Sparks, who seems to have been pretty good pals with her. One of these people made our victim face the music, but... Oh gosh. Matthew, is that you? I love you so much. But why are there two of you? Gabriel, are you high? Oh gosh. And we'll find out what Gabriel's problem is in chapter 3. Don't go. And we're back, folks, to start chapter 3 of Murder on the Dance Floor. That's what we last left off on. Hi, I'm flying through the sky, Matthew. Am, am I in a parallel universe? No, but you'll be in a world of trouble if the chief sees you like this. Gabriel, there you are. So sorry, Matthew, but Gabriel's taking some scrappy snacks. I tried to stop him, but he insisted. He said he wanted to learn more about the killer's psyche. Anyway, I'll take him back to the lab now. I have an antidote that will that'll get him back to normal. Come on, Gabriel. Matthew, I thought Gabriel had more sense to, than to take drugs, but I guess for him it was all in the name of science. In any case, our time is running out to solve this murder, so we'd better get cracking. What do you say we take another look around the record store? Come on, Matthew, we've got to nab this killer, and fast. Yeah. 
Matthew, this container's been labeled DJ Box of Shame. Doesn't sound very positive, does it? We better open up the box in case there's anything related to our victim in it. And if you think fixing that broken record is important, I'm with you. Let's do this, Matthew. We've got no time to lose. This is a vinyl record, and it was made by a duo called Teddy and Kalua. That's our victim's name. And could the Teddy be Teddy Brooks, the musician we met earlier? It would be pretty curious if Teddy made an album with our victim, seeing he told us he despised her music. We're going to have quite a few questions from a hottie musician. Mr. Brooks, we thought you hated Kalua Kaboom's music, so imagine our surprise when we found the album you made with her. Trap! I can't believe copies of that blasted LP still exist! If you must know, Senior Trooper Matthew, yes, Kalua and I were once a band in a band together. And we were doing really rather well, until the day Kalua decided to go solo. That selfish cow left me high and dry without a care in the world. And while Kalua went on to achieve great success in an adoring fan base, I can't get a gig for love or money. I even lowered myself so far as to promote myself on Instacam with Camelway 260 photographs, but it didn't work. The only thing that keeps me sane is, that, is a hit of Scrappy Snacks now and again, and I may not be able to afford those soon. Well, Mr. Brooks, if we find out you resorted to murdering Miss Kaboom in revenge for her leaving you, then you'll be the one going solo to jail. Okay, locked box now. Why am I looking away, folks? I'm watching the Monster Energy Supercross from Salt Lake City at the moment. Well, of course, it will be a lot later than this when I post this. There we go. Huh, Matthew, this DJ box of shame is filled with VHS cassettes. I can't remember the last time I saw one of those. I, I have a, quite a few of them myself. But yes, more, more importantly, one of them is labeled DJ Kaboom. This has to be about our victim. Let's get the tape straight to Kathy and see what's so shameful about it. Hopefully she'll, ask, hopefully she'll still have an old school video player she can watch it on. Nine hours. I'll see you guys when this is done. For now, this is Matthew. See you then. Well, I'm under unlimited energy happy hours, so I'm going to be speeding this up right now on the video cassette. Kathy, we sent you that VHS because we found it in a box labeled DJ Box of Shame. Did it have anything incriminating to say about our victim? Well, I did have to dig for hours around my dad's cobwebbed attic to find his old video player, but it was worth it in the end. Take a look for yourself. Alright dudes, today I'm interviewing DJ Kalua Kaboom. 
Kalua, let's talk about your tunes, man. My music is my passion, dude. Standing over my turntables, seeing all those beautiful party people below me dancing and going ecstatic over my melodies. Nothing compares. Hmm, yes, I see. Well, Kalua, I just, I just have one last question for you. How can you live with yourself doing what you do? Hang on. Kathy, is that it? Yes. Even though the interview is recent, the rest of the recording has been obliterated by mold because Ziggy reused an old cassette. <clears throat> but what's clear from what I could salvage is that your suspect, Ziggy Sparks, was furious at the victim. For what? I don't know. Well, there's only one way to find out, isn't there? Matthew, let's have another word with Ziggy. Hey, Senior Trooper Matthew. Want to buy my waffle pop? Robin, one of my awesomest customers, gave it to me. We'll pass, Mr. Sparks. We've watched your interview with Kalua Kaboom. What made you get so angry with her? Ah, oh, man, why'd you have to go and watch that? To be honest, dude, I couldn't help myself. Kalua was desecrating the classics, man. Say what now? She was remixing legendary songs from the greats with her uncool electronic beats. It was sacrilegious. Sacrilegious. Bowie wasn't made to be turned into dubstep remixes. Remixes. Kalua used to be a chilled babe, but not anymore. She started going on crazy rants about everything from hating cheese to how video games would be the death of us. If only she'd indulged in some scrappy snacks, she'd have understood that's the only that the only things that matter are peace and love, man. Hmm, Matthew. For a chill guy, Ziggy seems to be harboring a lot of anger towards the victim. And what was all that about Kalua Kaboom hating cheese? I thought she was the face of Bree Me Up, Tallulah Shropshire's cheese stall. I wonder what Tallulah thought about Kalua's diatribes against the very thing she'd been paid to promote. Let's ask her. Senior Trooper Matthew, I have a question for you. What kind of music does Cheese listen to? R&B? R&B? Oh, that's a good one. But funny you mentioned music because we heard the DJ who you who you used as the face of your brine had been badmouthing Cheese. You can't have been happy about that. Ah, hell. Alright, I shan't deny it. I was absolutely furious. I paid that lass good money to be the face of my cheese and spent my precious time taking photos of her on my Camaroy 260. Everything was fine for a while, but then Kalua decided to become a vegan and started telling all her fans that cheese was the devil's work. I trusted her with my precious cheese and she spat into my soul. How could she do that to me? Well, we trust that you didn't murder Miss Kaboom over a bit of cheddar. And she's not the one. Well, Matthew, this case is as clear as a pot of fondue. It now transpires that Kalua Kaboom had almost as many enemies as she did fans. She even managed to infuriate the perennially, the perennially calm Ziggy Sparks by desecrating classic songs. Was this enough for him to commit murder? Then there's Teddy Brooks, who is seriously jealous of Kaboom's success. And let's not forget Tallulah Shropshire, whom the victim annoyed by badmouthing the very cheese she was supposed to be sponsoring. But while our list of suspects remains a why, remains wide, our time is short, so we'd better get on with our investigation. You're right, we know the killer went to the waterside market, and it's the perfect place to get rid of evidence. Let's make another sweep of it.
50 minutes exactly left. I think I see a clue. Maybe two. Cameroid 260. Coconuts. Oh god, I forgot to put the... Ah, finder on. Magnifying glass on. Yep. That was the other clue. So I'm definitely not going to get the first star here. No. Oh well. Matthew, this is a Cameroid 260. The very camera that cropped up in our case. The last photo taken is still visible to the in the digital display on the back. Wait a second. It's a picture of our dead victim. This must be the camera the killer used to snap the photo we found earlier. Scraping off some of that yellowy mush on the Cameroid will be sure to provide a lead. And something incriminating could definitely be hiding in this discarded shopping bag. I agree. Let's take a look inside as fast as we can. This is one of those old school cameras. I think I had... I think my late grandpa had one before. Let's get this yellow goo from the killer's camera straight to the lab, Matthew. hours and the shopping bag taser electro shotgun Matthew you found an electro shotgun at the bottom of the shopping bag could this gun be what the killer used to electrocute the victim to death Rita will know let's get the weapon to her stat hours this these two I will let them go until uh, the end is near maybe we'll speed this up but we'll see what happens for now this is Matthew see you then okay we have returned let's get the results to yellow goo Matthew I'll leave fashion conscious Amir to tell you about the yellow substance you collected from the killers cameroid Right you are, Roops. Matthew, that sweet-smelling gloop was beeswax. Beeswax? Isn't that what you use to polish wood? What does it have to do with fashion? Well, this particular composition of beeswax is used to buff up wooden bow buff up a wooden bow tie. A wooden bow tie? What next? Grass waistcoats? Pants made of clay? It sounds ludicrous, I agree, but Amir assures me they're very much a la mode these days. They definitely are, and we can confirm that your killer's outfit will be adorned with a wooden bow tie. Well, Matthew, we're closing in on our wooden bow tie wearing killer. They won't be able to get away from us now. Matthew, I know your time is tight, so I'll get straight to the point. I am in no doubt that the electroshock gun you found, electroshock gun you found, was killed, 
you used you found was used to kill your victim. Excellent, Rita. How do you know? Well, first of all, it's a powerful weapon capable of releasing a strong enough charge to trigger a cardiac arrest. Secondly, I checked with the lab rats, and your victim's DNA was on the gun. There's no doubt she was zapped with this very electroshocker. And did this deadly electroshock gun reveal anything about our killer? Yes. Rupert and I found tiny blue flakes deposited on the gun. Upon closer inspection, they turned out to be nail polish. It looks like a killer chipped their varnished nails while committing their murderous deed. Well, Matthew, our killer's nails won't stay very polished when they're scratching to get out of their prison cell. Hi, Rose. Hi, Blanche. How do you set them, bro? Matthew, you got all the evidence we need to put Kalua Kaboom's killer under arrest. Let's go get him. Really tight, and I hate it. Oh? Just the opposite. I love the type man. Type man with cast iron picks. Stars that can choke a bear. Definitely not Tony Marconi. But you can eat breakfast off of that. Then the two of us. Nope, not Tallulah Shropshire. Definitely not Ziggy Sparks. Rose, where did you get in? And definitely not Teddy Brooks. Unbelievable, it's Robin Ash. I was telling you about when I was being tight. I love a tight man. Tight man, cast iron pigs. Robin Ash, you're under arrest for the murder of Kalua Kaboom. Oh, and gee, why do you need to throw shade on me like that? I've done nothing wrong. Maybe you should think about kicking your drug habit because we found your scrappy snacks all over the necklace you ripped off DJ Kaboom. And maybe you'd be less salty if you took some scrappy snacks yourself. <clears throat> what about the electroshock gun you used to electrocute the victim, which you found covered in your nail polish? Are you totes kidding me? Like I'm the only person in the greens with painted nails. Enough of your wit, Miss Ash. We found the photo you took of your murderous handiwork in the camera you used. Your game is up, so confess. Why'd you kill Kalua Kaboom? I killed her for revenge. Why else? Remember when I told you Kaboom gave one of my squad a seizure? Well, it wasn't just anyone, it was my sister! My little sis suffered from epilepsy, and flashing lights were a no-no for her brain. I told Kalua this, and she promised not to use strobe lighting. But she lied, and the crazy lights and techno beats were too much for my poor fragile Piper. She died from the seizure. DJ Kaboom's music show killed your sister? Yes, but it was more of an accident, and I didn't have the dollar to go after her powerful lawyer squad, so Kalua got away with it. So you decided to murder her instead? I had no choice. The rage was eating me alive, so I planned my attack. I knew Kalua would be on her own rehearsing in the morning, so I snuck into the blue flamingo, grabbed the stun gun, and attacked her from behind. I totes thought taking a photo of her would be satisfying proof of my revenge, but it just made me feel worse. Nothing will bring my sister back, nothing. Miss Ash, this is indeed a troubling situation. But we have no choice but to put you under arrest. Miss Ash, how do you plead in the murder of Kalua Kaboom? What abs? You already know I'm guilty. Look, I did it to avenge my sister. Eye for an eye and all that. It is truly unfortunate that you had to lose your sister, but taking justice into your own hands is not the answer. Robin Ash, this court sentences you to seven years in prison. That's savage. Matthew, Robin Ash's case is pretty tragic, and emotions will of course run high when a loved one comes to harm. But that doesn't mean you can't resort to murder. Look at me. I didn't go on a killing spree when my girlfriend went missing and returned with amnesia. That said, I still want to punch Marconi's smug little face. He's the only one Zoe remembers, so he has to be linked to her disappearance. But he won't talk. 
Matthew, I think it's time to head back to Marconi's nightclub and dig up the truth on it once and for all. Well, let's think about it. A delicious dinner at an elegant restaurant at night. You mean no coupons, Blanche? Take a look at the other ones. It's a little Shropshire clear from the start. Ziggy Spark, Ziggy Sparks, no wooden bow tie. Terry Brooks, no nail polish. Tony Marconi was cleared after clue three. It was Robin Ash. And I'll see you guys for Is This Just Fantasy 3 6. And we've returned. Let's start Is This Just Fantasy 3 6. Matthew, now Kalula Kaboom's murderer has been incarcerated. It's time to continue your investigation to Tony Marconi. I agree, Chief. We need to find out exactly what Marconi's so-called security company is working on. Your best bet is to head back to the Blue Flamingo and find out all you can about Marconi and Hawkeye security. Matthew, before you go, have you got a minute? I kind of really need your help. Very well, Amir. Matthew will check out the Blue Flamingo with Jones and then be right with you. Possibly two. Here we go. Oh. Missed out. Guys, if I look like I'm hurting a little bit, it's because I've been out all day today. And jelly. Matthew, why don't you pick up the sports bag? Oh, I see. It's got the logo of Hawk Secur Hawkeye Security, Marconi's company on it. This bag must belong to one of his goons. It won't hurt to have a quick, quick peek inside the bag, will it? find that's in the sports bag. Ah, it's a restricted access pass. You're right. This pass may well reveal something about what Marconi's goons are up to. Let's send it to Kathy. Six hours. Definitely going to get the results tomorrow. Matthew, really sorry to bother you with this, but I'm just so worried. The thing is, I was supposed to meet Rupert at the Waterside Market and he never showed up. You know Rupert, he's never late. British punctuality and all that. I can't help thinking that something bad might have happened to him. What's that, Matthew? You'll come to the floating market and help me look for Rupert? Thank you so much. Just nothing like starting out the day with a big pile of eggs and cinnamon toast. 
Oh, damn. I almost forgot the old lady's got to eat. <laughs> she isn't here. What? She isn't here. She left. Last night? You didn't know. No, I did not know. What do you mean, last night? She go? Sicily? <laughs> Just square things with Guido. Sicily? What are you talking about? Sicily? She said she cleared up with you. She did not clear it with me. Then get me one of these to cut with you. Was it? Uh, Rupert's nowhere in sight. Rupert's notepad. Welcome, Scott. It's all. Six seconds. Oh. No. Kind of thought it was too good to be true. Matthew, only Rupert would monogram his initials on a notepad. It has to belong to him. So this means Rupert was here, but where does he disappear to? Matthew, maybe if you recover what he wrote, it'll help us find him. So let's see, Rupert's to-do list for today was to pick up tea, dry clean his waistcoat, and meet me at the market. So far this sounds like a standard day for Rupert. But wait, the last entry on the list is to acquire the mysterious artifact of Nalus? Nalsteros? What on earth is that all about? You're right, Gabriel's all up on his culture. Maybe he'll know. Let's get Rupert's to-do list to him right away. You know what? I'm gonna speed up the access pass. I wanna get this out of the way. Kathy, any luck tracing tra tracing that access pass? Matthew found it in the belongings of one of Marconi's security guards, so it's got to lead to something they're working on. Well, I decided to examine the card's magnetic strip, the black line that you that you need to destroy to open a corresponding door. It took a bit of hacking, but I found something unexpected. Do you remember that satellite that crashed into the Greensboro Forest a year ago? It's being protected by a dome to contain the radiation emanating from it. Of course I do, but how is all that relevant now? Well, this passes for a security checkpoint outside this dome where the satellite's being kept. Do you mean to say Marconi Security Company is guarding the satellite? It seems that way. Well, that's quite an interesting contract for Marconi to have. Matthew, we better ask him about it. I decided to speed, speed these up because I have the cash, so I might as well just do so. Not you again, Jones. What are you going to blame me for this time? Marconi, we know your security company has been hired to guard the satellite in the forest. So what? You're not happy that my security company got that contract? Maybe you should bring it up with Dream Life, the people who hired me. Hang on a minute. Are you saying the satellite belongs to Dreamlight? The same company that owns that virtual reality game that everyone's going on about? Oh wait, they did mention this in the news a year ago. But with all but what with all this Dreamlight virtual reality stuff, I'd forgotten all about it. I don't blame you, Jones. 
Dream Life has been pretty hush hush about it all, and about many other things too. What exactly are you trying to say? Well, all the men I put to guard the satellite were made to sign non disclosure agreements. They can't tell anyone what they've seen, not even me, their own boss. Something smells fishy about the whole satellite bid business, Senior Trooper Matthew. Trust me, Tony Marconi's got a nose for shady dealings, and this dream life is as dodgy as they come. Well, it's already shady enough that dream life would choose to hire you. Ah, Jones, when are you finally going to trust me? Here, take this peace offering. Matthew, I wonder if dream life knows that the security firm they hired to protect their... Ex monster. Never mind what Dream Life is doing on the satellite in the first place. You're right. The best person to answer these questions is Rosetta Pierre, Dream Life's founder. Let's have a word with her. Miss Pierre, we've learned that you hired Hawkeye Security to guard the Dreamlife satellite. Are you aware that this security firm is run by Tony Marconi, an ex-mobster? Oh, Inspector Jones, you mean to say you disapprove? What adorable bourgeois mora morals you have. Of course I knew. I heard Hawk Hawkeye was the best in the business, and I always hired the best, no matter what their background. Why do you even have a satellite? We thought Dream Life was in the business of virtual reality and video games and whatnot. May I remind you, Senior Trooper Matthew, that virtual reality is just one of the many things Dream Life does. The satellite was for a communications project, which obviously didn't quite go as planned. But it doesn't matter. There are plenty more incredible things to come at Dream Life. To come at Dream Life. Just you wait and see. In fact, I'm so sure of my success that I'm willing to place a bet on it on your behalf. And speed up Rupert's list. Hopefully Rupert's okay. Gabriel, please tell us you know what Rupert was on about in his daily planner. Can it help us find him? Well, Matthew, I must admit, I never heard of the mysterious artifact of of Niall Storos, but I did some digging and consulted some of my contacts. And it turns out that this is one of the challenges set by Dream Life VR, the virtual reality game that's all the rage at the moment. What the? So this means Rupert's been playing the VR game? I had no idea he was into it. It seems that way, but the good news is that I just... But the good news is that I decipher what this challenge actually means. You see, although this is a virtual reality game, it also sets some tasks in the real world which players must compete, complete in order to advance to the next level. In this case, acquiring the mysterious artifact in question involves purchasing an obscure album called Housework by the famous Hoovers. Well, we do know of one record store assistant who loves his obscure albums, Ziggy Sparks. Matthew, let's see if you can help us find Rupert. Senior Trooper Matthew, you about to grab some music? I got some pretty sweet tunes I could recommend you. Actually, Mr. Sparks, we're here to ask about one particular record, Housework by the famous Hoovers, and... Ah, not you as well. A bunch of people have already come in today asking for this record, but they were all wearing VR headsets. I remember one hilarious old British dude who kept bumping into things. Don't think he's quite worked out how to use his headset yet. You've got to be talking about Rupert. Mr. Sparks, did this man say anything to you? Hmm, let me think. Ah, yes. He kept muttering about having to get back to his laboratory. Is he a mad scientist or something? Oh, also the guy paid for a $10 record with a $100 bill. 
but he left before I could get, give him his change. I give you the money now, but I've only gone and forgotten the key code to open my cash register. Well, Senior Trooper Matthew here is a dab. Senior Trooper Matthew here is a dab hand at unlocking things. And we can spare a few minutes to take a look at your cash register and grab Rupert's change. Ah, thanks so much, man. You'll find the register, register just over there. And here, you totally deserve a bite of my avocado toast. Slang term for a burger, I'd say. Cash register. Again, I had first place already. Well, Matthew, that's the cash register, all right. Let's have it that lock so we can get Rupert's change and find him back at the lab. Senior Trooper Matthew. Respect, man. Here's the old dude's change. Thanks, Mr. Sparks. Senior Trooper Matthew and I need to leave you now to make sure all is well with the old dude in question. Oh, let's talk to Rupert. Rupert! We've been looking all over for you. Oh, blast, Amir. I'm so sorry. I completely forgot we were supposed to meet at the market. You also forgot your change from the record store. Oh, thank you, Matthew. What would I do without you? You see, the thing is, I'm rather taken by this virtual reality game Amir introduced me to. It really is simply marvelous. And I was desperately keen to complete the latest challenge because it would take me to the most exciting level of all. Here, Matthew, take a look for yourself. Well, hello again, my dear Rupert. Welcome to Buckingham Palace. Have you ever seen anything so beautiful? Now you mustn't tarry. The Queen will be here shortly for your afternoon tea together. Afternoon tea with the Queen of England. I can see why you were so excited, Rupert. It's a dream come true, Matthew. 
Well, as long as you remember that it's just a fantasy world and that people in real life can get real worried about you. I know, I know, Amir. I promise I shan't let you down again. Matthew, I heard Grouper went on a walkabout in the world of virtual reality. I know. Who'd have thought a technophobe like him would get into VR? Speaking of which, I understand the makers of Dreamlike VR somehow ended up involved in your investigation too, Jones. Yep. You know the satellite crash site in the forest, which is under guard because of the high, which is under guard because the area has high levels of radiation. Well, first of all, I totally forgot the satellite belonged to Dreamlife. And secondly, Dreamlife hired Marconi's security company to guard it. This is indeed an interesting choice of contractor on Dreamlife's part. The strange thing is that Marconi himself thinks there's something off about the situation. He said Dreamlife is being unusually secretive about the satellite. I can believe that. After all, Dreamlife seems to have made an effort to make people forget the satellite was theirs in the first place. Rosetta Pierre didn't seem too pleased when we reminded her about the crash. She's clearly not a fan of failure, which doesn't surprise me. Agreed. Matthew, all this casts dream life in a dream life in a troubling light. And although and although we have nothing concrete to implicate it in criminal activity, we better keep a close eye on it. Okay, so I'm gonna. I wanted to get it over with before my week of school. May 3rd, 2018. Oh, that's a Tuesday this time. Okay. Okay. Only one new sticker. Five new ones. going to do and I'll see you guys on May 3rd see y'all then